Novel intrauterine use of endocyanine green ICG for robotic and laparoscopic surgery. ICG is a fluorescent dye developed by Kodak in 1955 for near infrared photography. Fluorescence is caused by incident infrared 780 nanometer light that causes photon emission at 820 to 830 nanometers. ICG was FDA approved in 1959 and has many established clinical uses such as retinal angiography, liver clearance testing, and cardiac output monitoring. ICG has traditionally been used intravenously to identify vascular perfusion and differentiate tissue density. ICG has recently been used intraureterally to visualize the urinary tract for ureteral surgery and assess viability of ureteral tissue. We will present two cases illustrating how ICG can be used intraureterally for robotic ureteral surgery. The methodology was as follows. The patient was placed into lithotomy position. Cystoscopy was performed and an open-ended catheter was inserted into the ureteral orifice and attached to a Foley catheter distally. The patient was then moved into full flank position and the robot was docked above the patient. 25 milligrams of ICG was prepared in 50 milliliters of distilled water. 10 milliliters of this solution was injected through the open-ended catheter during the surgery. The surgical robot fluorescence imaging was used to detect the fluorescence in real time. A novel technique was used to prepare the open-ended catheter. A 20-gauge needle was used to make perforations every 2 centimeters along the catheter so that ICG would be diffusely distributed along the ureter. Here is a video comparison of the standard catheter on the left and the newly prepared catheter on the right. On the left, the ICG exits only from the tip of the catheter. On the right, the ICG exits evenly along the length of the catheter. This technique provides simultaneous distribution of ICG throughout the entire ureter, allowing easy and quick ureteral identification. Case 1 is a robotic hemi-nephrectomy for a duplicated collecting system. The patient is a 25-year-old woman with no significant medical history presenting with recurrent UTIs. Here is a coronal view of the patient's MRI showing the duplicated collecting system. A yellow arrow is pointing to the normal ureter and a red arrow is pointing to the dilated mega ureter. The mega ureter is followed upwards in red. A view of the renal pelvis shows complete upper pole atrophy. Here is the cystoscopy showing insertion of the open-ended catheter into the left ureteral orifice. The robot was docked and surgery was begun. The kidney was dissected to expose the ureter. ICG was then injected and the surgical robot fluorescence imaging was used to localize the fluorescence in real time. As seen fluorescing in green, the left ureter is normal appearing and is not dilated. Both ureters were then dissected distally. ICG helped identify that the upper pole ureter, shown at the bottom of the screen, was dilated and that the lower pole ureter, shown at the top of the screen, was normal. Distal dissection was continued and ICG identified the ureterovesical junction and how both ureters entered the bladder. The UVJ and bladder are outlined in yellow and blue, respectively. Case 2 is robotic ureterolysis. The patient is a 63-year-old man with a history of chronic myelocytic leukemia presenting with right hydronephrosis secondary to retroperitoneal fibrosis. The patient previously had a ureteral stent placement with three follow-up stent exchanges at about three-month intervals. The patient's past medical and surgical history is listed. Shown here is a coronal view of the patient's CAT scan without and with IV contrast. A retroperitoneal soft tissue mass outlined in yellow was seen encasing the abdominal aorta and pulling the right ureter medially. Cystoscopy was performed to insert the open-ended catheter into the ureteral orifice. Ureteral dissection was begun and ICG was injected to distinguish the ureter from the retroperitoneal mass. 
Using the ICG, the dissection of the ureter was continued proximally in order to safely mobilize the ureter laterally. With the ureter freely mobilized, the anatomy of the ureter was easily appreciated. An added benefit of using the ICG was that ICG leakage, outlined in yellow, identified a ureteral perforation during the surgery. A ureteral stent was inserted after the completion of the robotic surgery to avoid further complications. In both cases, the ureters were identified successfully with a novel technique for ICG injection and there were no surgical complications. An ICG concentration of 25 milligrams and 50 milliliters of distilled water, which was more dilute than that reported in other studies, minimized venous backflow and spillage out of the ureter into the surrounding soft tissue. In conclusion, our novel open-ended catheter technique for ICG injection can aid robotic ureteral surgery by identifying the urinary tract and may also help prevent surgical complications.